Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. It's a bird. It's a plane. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the Krypton Report. The all things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Hello, I am the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. My name is Tyler Patrick, and this is the Krypton Report. And welcome with me my co-host, the Superman of Red, the man of steel himself, Mr. James Cole. Now, tonight's episode is going to be a fun one because this episode is actually um, parts of different episodes where we were talking news, but due to either people dropping off, technical issues, or timing, we never really got to finish so this episode is going to have some new content and some times where we talk about some other things that didn't make it in other episodes, but there's just been so much DC stuff come out, it's been a lot to talk about. So we've just tried to compile it into one thing for a coherent discussion, something for everyone to enjoy, and to catch up on some news and let you know what we're thinking, because this is a great time to be a fan. Enjoy. We're here to catch up on some more news because, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that seems to happen. Like, what the heck, man? And with me, as always, is the mighty of, mightiest of men, the mighty mortal, the man of steel, James. Yo. All right, let's jump into this. All right. So, <laughs> All right, let's do this. So, trying to organize my thoughts. We got a trailer for season seven of Flash. Um, good. I'm finally I'm happy to see. It feels like, you know, the marketing was getting slow on, you know, a lot of stuff and because flash comes out in two weeks two weeks from tomorrow flash will be back with season seven and it was a trailer but i mean i couldn't really tell you what's going on in the trailer <laughs> um let me get uh, let me see what what was going on in the trailer um iris was still stuck in the mirror zone mirror realm barry still is losing his speed and is crying and somehow has to save the day. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we see like a glimpse of him running with like blue and yellow electricity as he's trying to create his speed force. Um, that's cool. Um, I mean, sadly, that's just been a flash the last couple of seasons. Yeah. But I'm hoping for a good retweak with this season because things have shifted and changed. You know, we're supposed to get that condensed kind of off-camera exit somehow of Ralph Dibney, which with his character, I mean, they can he can change his face up so they could use another actor to kind of be Ralph to say goodbye to Elongated Man. Uh, but, yeah. And so that's exciting, okay? I, I love The Flash. We got a poster for it. It looks cool. Uh, I was kind of hoping, you know, Brian was said this too, like, Maybe for the return of season seven, he'd get the gold boots, but, you know, maybe he will later on in the season. Because um, I feel like season seven is going to start with kind of trying to finish off and catch up with what was left of season six. Yeah, COVID kind of shortened everything there. Uh, <clears throat> and then speaking of Flash. Okay. I'll say in, in terms of Flash, I wish, I wish they'd have just finished it up and got it over with. So we didn't have to go back to it come the beginning of season seven. I I agree. So <laughs> Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Batwoman have all got season renewals. So we'll, we will get Flash in season eight and a Batwoman season three and a Legends season seven. Isn't that correct? Well, actually, I think, yes, Legends season seven. Um, they are actually... Um, well, I mean, this has nothing to do with DC except for the fact that they renewed 12 shows over there at CW. Yes. Um, Early we, renewal. Yep. Um, and we'll get, we'll get a little bit more of that here in a moment. Uh, Black Lightning Returned. They put a trailer out for Black Lightning, and it was like, Black Lightning Returned. Here's the trailer. One week. And it's the final season of Black Lightning. And it's cool. Like, I watched the... The return. It was a good episode. Um, 
there's a couple of points on it that I was kind of like, are we still hitting on this? Um, like, I think the show had matured past this, but now they decide to step back. Um, it is, you know, sad that Black Lightning's final season, they just included him into the world of all the other heroes. Maybe we'll get some sort of mention of things, but I'm kind of curious how they're going to end it, you know? I could see Black Lightning ending with Jefferson's death. Like, I just kind of feel like for that character, it could work. Um, especially the way that the tone feels going into this season. <clears throat> I haven't gotten to watch Black Lightning yet, so. And then keeping in our CW universe, um, I don't know if you've been watching, I just wanted to throw out a holler mention that Zaz was just on episode three of Batwoman. It was really cool. It was probably the best, it is the best live action Zaz. Like he's cocky and creepy. He has the scars. We see him mark himself with another scar. Um, you know, he's not as dark as like kind of the one we saw in Birds of Prey. But I don't know, like I would recommend just watching, if you're not watching Batwoman, just watch this episode to see Zaz. Um, because, you know, we got Zaz on Birds of Prey, and we got Zaz on Gotham, and he was creepy on Gotham, but he wasn't, like, the marking up himself as much creepy yet, like... Not yet. He was kind of just getting into that. He was marking himself, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't a focus of his character in Gotham. Ex exactly. Um, I mean, the actor was great. And I guess I didn't realize the actor that plays... Zaz on Batwoman did do a small part on Gotham as a, like a side character. Uh, don't ask me. Oh, okay. Me. Well, hey, the guy who played Zaz played the the poisonous smoke dude on um, the Flash. Yeah, so, he did. Yes, he did. I mean, it just kind of goes back and forth, right? The CW universe and yeah, I mean, it, it's funny how that works out. Uh, All right, let's see here. Uh, the pilot for the Naomi series. So Naomi from Ava DuVernay, the recently created Bendis character, did get a pilot order um, from the CW. So it's got a pilot, not a series, but a pilot. And I'm kind of interested in how that's going to work, if they don't tie it into um, to an already existing like universe. I mean, she should show up on Earth Prime. Um, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, that would be as bring her into Earth Prime and have her be a remnant from her world that was destroyed in crisis, maybe. Yeah, I mean, because I know she's from an alternate Earth in the comics, but that's about all I know. I just don't. I mean, she came in. I read I read her story when she was in the actual Superman in action run. Uh, but I didn't read her side story. And I just kind of wonder, being like a newer property, it's from DC Comics, yes, but nobody really knows this comic or this character. Will it do well? I don't know. We'll see. You know. Um, well, it also kind of gives the um, the credence to no expectations exactly. for people who don't know the character. Kind of, kind of how the kind of how season two of Batwoman is with Ryan Wilder. It's a completely original character and there's no expectations to where the story's going to go now. Yeah. It's, it's very much, but I hope, but I, I really hope that does not mean, I really hope that does not mean for the CW that they're just going to start creating new characters to go into the DC universe so they can just do their own. CW original characters and just keep doing their, you know, dramatic irony filled teen drama stuff. I agree. I agree. You know, you know, if you're going to be keep doing the DC shows, you know, keep giving us DC characters and, and, uh, their, their secret identities and stuff. Give us something a little bit. We know it's completely, we know it's different than the comics, but give us something anchored to the comics. Right. Like, I, mean, I want something. Like, I want to feel like I know these characters. But then also, I mean, they went ahead and the um, proposed Wonder Girl. Like, this is so weird. They were into a Wonder Girl series on CW. 
but it was going to be the new Wonder Woman from Future State of Yara. Mm -hmm. And they've decided to scrap that. And that one, I think, kind of bums me because I feel like Wonder Girl kind of has some name recognition. You can kind of tie it in to a Wonder Woman, but it's still its own thing because it is this different character, this new character, something that we haven't experienced yet. And, you know, her, her origin is different. And I was actually thinking, because I really liked how she appeared in the comic, I was kind of interested in that one. Uh, her comics were good. We still don't have a whole lot of information. We've only gotten uh, with two issues of her comic, two issues of her with Superman, and two issues of her in the Justice League. So, so yeah, I mean, I was just kind of curious, but yeah, they've officially axed that. And that's kind of, I don't know, kind of a bummer because I feel like, in a way, the ECW, like we just had Crisis, and that was like the big, like, yeah, Crisis. They kind of introduced us at Justice League, and now they're just, it's all ending in, a, in, in one sense, you know, like, we got Supergirl's arrow ended. Supergirl and Black Lightning are going off the air after this season. We're going to get one new show with Naomi, maybe. Um, and that's, you know, that's all we know. I mean, Stargirl is new, too. I don't want to forget that. So, uh, Absolutely. But, and before we get into... The next thing I do want to throw out that they did cast Tim Drake for Titans. There will be Tim Drake on Titans. Um, I can't remember the actor's name. I had it in my notes, but it's going to be nice to see a legit live action Tim Drake. They did ethnic swap him to African American, which is fine uh, as long as he pulls off the character. Um, I did see some hate online about it because people suck and have no common sense or courtesy to anyone or anything in the world. Um, so that's frustrating to me. Um, so honestly, I could give, I could care less. Um, Jay Lecurgo. Yeah, sounds right. Um, that's, that's the kid who is cast as uh, Tim Drake, who it's, which is funny because he's, He's the boy who looks super scared and is crying when Pattinson beats the crap out of that dude in the trailer. Yep, he's so one of the thugs in um, the bat. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this version of the character is Tim Drake wasn't from the wrong side of the tracks. Tim Drake didn't have a rough childhood growing up. He was a good kid. He wanted he only wanted to help Batman. He didn't even want to be Robin to begin with. He just wanted Batman. He, he, he knew things were not going good for Batman. Um, so it was kind of out of the goodness of his heart. He was, um, he was privileged and he was just incredibly intelligent and very talented. And, and that's how he ended up becoming Robin. Um, it seems like every time they, they ethnic swap, a character like this, he's going to be for, at least from the early casting calls. Maybe they could change this. I don't know. He's supposed to be come from a rough background and have a rough childhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, Coming yeah. from like the streets of Gotham just because he, just because they, they, they race swapped him does not mean that his parents still could not have been privileged. I agree. You know what I mean? He could he could very easily still come from that background. Race be damned. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean? But why are they changing the background of the character just because, you know what I mean? Is it because of, of changing his race or is it, you know, just the way they feel that it's got to be to go with the story? I really don't know. But... I mean, it's, it's just, not like it's, he's it's, how, it's how it usually happens. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's how it usually happens, and it's kind of like they don't need to do that. Why are they not 
being true to the original version, like, yeah, it just, I hope that specifically isn't the case just because they, they race bent him. You know, like, he's not an amalgam, you know? Like, there was a legit Jason Todd. It's not one of those where they kind of blend, like they did in the animated series where they blended Jason and Tim's story together. So, yeah, they, they don't have to, you know, they don't have I to. I hope do he does. That. I hope he does well, and I'm glad to see Tim Drake getting some getting some love. I mean, he he was he's in a little bit of Young Justice season two and season three. Um, that's that's been it since the animated series. So it's been a long time since Tim Tim Drake's gotten any love since uh, since Damien came out really, and and um, he's the Robin everyone loves. Jason came, but loves and the Jason came aside. back as Red Hood. Exactly. Uh, the other, so we got that out of the way. Now, the other big news stuff is we got Superman and Lois has been ordered two more episodes. So that'll bring its episode total to 15. It hasn't got a renewal yet, but it did get two more episodes added. We got a new poster for Superman and Lois, which is our banner on our Facebook, which is a breathtaking photo that was also available on a pizza box near the Chicago area. Um, you see the farm. You see Clark's face. You see Lois and the boys. There's been all kinds of really cool snippet videos that have been popping up um, from it. And then, like, you see it's Clark's face, but he's got the Superman, and there's, like, a uh, costume on. You have the clouds, the sunset, the Kent farm, the Kent mailbox. It's a great poster. Um, I can't wait. They're, they're doing some pretty good marketing for um, for Superman and Lois. I mean, yeah. The other thing is we got... Um, well, Superman hasn't been on TV since, in his own show since Smallville went off the air, and that wasn't even quote-unquote Superman. Yeah, that was... So... You know, that was a... Uh, Lord... Um, I know. <laughs> and then we got a second trailer for Superman and Lois. And what did you think about the second trailer? Um, actually, I'm going to look it up right now because it's been a minute since you religiously watched everything. Since you know we have so much stuff that comes at us every day. <laughs> I know, right? I just feel like I, I do a lot of talking, and sometimes I feel like I need to let you talk. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, <laughs> they've done so you might want to cut out a little dead air here. Nah, give me a second. They've done a lot. <laughs> of really, they've done some Superman and Lois uh, TV spots. That have showed little bits of things. It we do see that one of his sons in the trailer is that's under those pipes. Um and we do know that Sam Lane knows that Clark Superman. I, I'm still like excited about that aspect of the series. I think that's a really cool concept. My head's just been full of Zack Snyder news uh, trailer bit, so I'm refreshing. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's it's really modern, you know. Sam Lane knows that he is. It's nice to see the the kids are actually upset, especially the Jordan. the it was Jordan. Um, uh, he's definitely upset. He's upset with both of them. Uh, about lying, lying to them, them the times, times that they were gone, um, and stuff like that. Like they're upset that their parents have lied to them that, that their father is Superman. Um, I think maybe I think maybe from what we're seeing that maybe it's kind of forced in a way, depending on what happens. I mean, you say you say it looks like the boys under the pipe, or at least one of them is underneath the pipe. Uh, all the pipes that fall. So somebody, somebody didn't get hurt, yeah. and they want to know why. 
is is what I feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's kind of like time to break the news. I mean, kind of like Clark was about 15 years old when he was told that he was an alien. Because things started happening, happening that he couldn't, couldn't explain. explain. Or at least he, he got to an age where he needed an explanation for the things that have been happening that he, could, that he couldn't explain. True. Um, yeah, I, I just, the, the family dynamic, like we, we actually have more kind of fun music in the trailer. Um, that kind of like lightens the mood a little bit. And I was like, at first I was like, this feels, I don't know. Like it's like, it's all super serious, but then they kind of really, uh, lighten it up with that music. And I was like, okay. Um, well, you know, like I said, the, the you know, the, the, a, a better, a perfect Superman kind of lies in between like the, the super serious version and, and then the super campy. You know, you we, know, we see more of like them in the house with the kids. Um, we see Clark and Lois like in the elevator. I mean, like the line where what is that? Lana's daughter that's in the barn with them. Yeah. And they're like, what did your dad say about um, growing up here? Or did your dad tell you about growing up here? And she says it's completely boring or something. And they're like, well, I think he actually liked it. You know, or that he really liked it. Like, it's nice showing that Clark loves his his farm boy days growing up on the farm. He does. I mean, in the middle of nowhere. You know, he uh, he does love it. You know, it's it's. I think it's the first place for someone who you know would find out like he has no home in a sense. It is his home. Um, we get to see kind of just more shots of Clark, like being kind of Clark, like dealing with stuff. And it looks like the kids find, they, uh, they find daddy's ship. You know, they, uh, they, we see them pulling out where the ship would have been. And so that's kind of exciting that they're going to find his craft and, you know, kind of prove that he is Superman. It's pretty awesome looking effect, though, because, you know, back in the day in Smallville, we would have gotten him holding something up, you know, picking up a tractor, holding up a vehicle, catching a car, what have you. Now we've got, see where we've come, we've got him lifting up the truck above his head and then flying up with it and, like, all seeing it. Yeah, I like, you know, I really like just the feel of this show, like, of Clark, like, you know, we need you at home. You know, the world's going to need Superman, but we need you at home. And, of course, in this trailer, there's also an awesome uh, shot of Superman using heat vision up close. And I'm I'm really excited for this. Like, we've talked about it, you know, like, of course, I'm excited for it being Superman, but I just like this angle of Superman, you know, like just something fresh and a new way of approaching this character. Um, yeah. And then the last bit of news, and this just dropped here recently, we, um, cast Angus McFadden. Um, he was on, he was in Braveheart. I believe he's also in Saw 3. As Sounds Jarell. right. As Jarrell. So he, and I'm like, okay, that could be cool. Like, not that I have anything against him as Jarrell, but, you know, sometimes I just kind of need to get some legacy casting in for Jarrell. You know, I'm still was waiting for, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, like Gerard Christopher, you know, to be Jarrell. Right. Um, well, we can, um, you know, we've we've got a, a we've got a character actor to be Jor-El now. Um, I mean, at this point, I think I think Superman is going to. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, he's going to want advice about being a parent, but his, his father. I mean, it's a it's a computer. It's not his father. He didn't, and he didn't raise him either. Yeah. So 
it's interesting. It kind of just makes me think that having a character, you're going to need the character anyways for something consi- um, involving Superman and, and his past and his parentage, but maybe um, like later on some sort of Oz effect storyline. That could be cool. Well, guys, real quick here. Did anyone see the announcement about that they're going to bring Superman 78 into the comics now and do its own line? That they did before Batman sixty six. Uh, I saw, um, I saw that Batman eighty nine thing. I, I missed Batman or I missed the Superman thing. So yep, they're going to do Batman eighty nine as a comic book run and Superman seventy eight as a comic book run. Okay. That's yeah. Just, that's pretty yeah, that's definitely awesome. Um, I I was hoping they would do something like that. I mean, they did. Um. Batman 66, they did the the um, the, the comic book, um, and then, uh, you know, they did the Return of the Cape Crusader, um, the, the two animated films, so they oh, really yeah. brought back the 1966, and then even then they did the 19, uh, what was it, 77 Wonder Woman, is that when it was? Yep, Wonder Woman 77. Um, yeah, Wonder Woman 77. So Linda Carter even got a Wonder Woman book. Um, so between those things, I was like, well, when are they going to do, you know, when are they going to do comics of like Superman, like Chris Reeves or, or you know, all these these projects that that got passed over like like old movie projects and things like that, that didn't get developed um, or, or that completely changed like Tim Burton's Batman three instead of Batman forever. Um, You know, that, that they could do these as, as comics or, um, or, or animated movies, you know, Um, be really cool to see that. And, and I think, um, it took a while because I think the night, the Batman 66 was very popular. Um, I think it took a while for them to, to really explore these, these popular worlds that they have under their, uh, under their umbrella and, and, you know, give us, give us more stories in these, in, in the worlds that people um, still go back to, I mean, especially with Superman, you know, Chris Reeves and everybody has their, uh, uh, everybody has their, sometimes I put an S on Reeves and it bugs me when I do it. It's that um, and, I've and, done it too. Other things. Yeah. And, um, uh, a loser. uh, everybody has their, their, their version of Batman, you know, and, and Michael Keaton is that version of bat it is so many people's Batman and stuff like, yeah, definitely. Um, it took a while, but I think I think now embracing the like like really embracing the multiverse over all forms of media now, you know, being TV and movies and comics and stuff like that. Like the the way that they're doing that, like like how the multiverse is a big thing. The this way they're giving like. These cre- the creative freedoms, you know, to these directors to tell stories they want or these writers to tell stories they want in basically almost any time period. Like, I think it's about time, and, and I'm excited to see it when it comes out. Um, I believe they come out digitally in July. I believe it was the 27th. I'm not positive on that. I know it was July, and then they're going to come out in print um, in August. And then they're going to have the, they're, they're short series. They're, they're not long, um, because they already have the collected editions planned for October and November. Which I'll probably just buy the collected edition. I think there, but I'm excited too. I always think those are fun. And yeah, we've talked about that. Uh, the other thing I was going to ask you guys real quick, um, you know, Soul of the Dragon came out, and we haven't reviewed that yet. We'll get around to it. It was a much different kind of film, but it had the trailer attached for the Justice Society World War II, which will be coming out soon. Um, what did you guys think of that? 
trailer. Um, I don't know if I saw it. No, uh, I watched the first look on the special features, and then and then they have the trailer on YouTube, and um, it's really it's interesting. Um, they've got uh, it, it's got somewhat like the same. Um, it's got the same uh, like computer um, computer animation um, cell uh, cell shaded animation that they used for the Man of Tomorrow. Yep. Um, and it's yeah, it's Justice Society, um, and Wonder Woman's leading the Justice Society in World War Two. Wait, wait, wait. Does it have Barry in it? Yes. It has okay, Jack Derrick and Barry. Yeah, Barry comes from the future. My bad. I did see it. Which makes yes. me wonder if it'll be yes. part of something connected with Superman Man of Tomorrow. Because of the animation style and the fact that mm-hmm. a Barry comes to the past. So, you know, that Barry could be the one, of, you know, with Superman. I like that Wonder Woman's big again. Like, she's like very back to original Marston Wonder Woman. And we're going to see her leading. Um, you know, there's no Green Lantern which is a bummer, um, you know, for the Justice Society. There's no Star Girl or Star Man. Um, Wonder Woman does have an accent, which that's cool, I guess. You know, it's different. Um, but it looks good. Like, I like that we're branching out a little bit away from Superman and Batman. Um, I like that we have a, a Flash and Wonder Woman and with other characters that, you know, need support. And I'm actually really excited for it because, you know, I like the brighter look of this animation style. And I like back to more of our superhero comic book. I don't know if you guys have watched um, Soul of the Dragon, but it's it's it reminded me real quick of like um, Arkham, the assault on Arkham where it really was a Suicide Squad movie, but Batman was just in there to kind of help sell it. This is much more of a Kung Fu movie with characters where Batman once again is just there to sell the film. Not yeah, that- he's a vehicle to introduce these martial artists, but Batman fits very well into the martial arts world of DC. Oh, he does. And I mean, it works. You know, I'm not against it, but saying like, uh, yeah, that's what that was. But yeah, what what could be really interesting is if, because it's the same animation, if they have an idea of a, of a, of a, of a shared continuity going forward um, for, you know, how they had the continuity before that ended with apocalypse war. Mm -hmm. Um, If they do move forward, what would be really awesome is like, say we get some of these other movies. So we're getting wonder woman in world war two with the justice society. We're going to see Barry going back in time. We're going to see Jay Garrick and stuff we could get. So like, this is a, Barry movie and a Wonder Woman movie and then maybe we get a Batman movie or something but when we get another movie down the line we can get Wonder Woman again Yeah, we get Wonder Woman maybe even with a new costume, an updated costume because she's got a very golden age costume in World War II um, but we get Wonder Woman, you know, because she is like she's like immortal as as it would seem, you know, she or at least she has extreme longevity, um, depending on what version you have. But she could be that she could be she could look the exact same with an updated costume in contemporary times. So that would be really cool to see as a as a way of going. You know, maybe maybe they just something that occurred to me. Maybe they they took the idea of five G what they were doing, how they were kind of doing like a timeline Mm -hmm. and maybe they're transferring that over to like the animated world, you know, where wonder woman was one of the first heroes back in world war two, wonder Woman's one of the first heroes. And then we get Superman, you know, so maybe, maybe it's something like that. Maybe they're using a timeline or, or taking the timeline from what they developed for that and, and adapting it into the, into the animated universe. That'd be. So let's see what other news we have. Oh yes. So 
uh, John Wesley Ship just filmed scenes to be Jay Garrick in a flashback sequence on the new Earth 2 for Stargirl. So that helps officially bring Stargirl more into the Arrowverse, even though, you know, it was teased at the, as the part of the new multiverse at the end of Crisis. It's the only one that we feel is going to make some sort of connection uh, with the already established cast. Right. Yeah, they didn't have any any connections before except for the the shot from Crisis. But um, and I'm pretty sure Jay Garrick was from Earth Three. Yep. So, um, yep. in the Flash. So, but uh, in the New Fifty Two Earth Two. And I'm sure, and I'm pretty sure other versions, but in the New 52 Earth 2, Jay Garrick was the Flash on Earth 2. Yeah, so that's just, you know, post-crisis reconstruction. Yeah, but it's going to be awesome to see Wesley ship back as yes. um, uh, as a Flash, as Jay Garrick, because, you know, that was, that, was pretty, that was a pretty exciting moment back when he... Um, was revealed to be Jay Garrick from Earth 3 back in Season 2. Oh, man, that was such a... That season was good. Such a good season. Um, so Stargirl, they advertise, is returning this summer. So I'm thinking June-ish, maybe, you know, May, June-ish, but they said Stargirl summer, because they're filming now, and then it said Legends comes back May 2nd. Legends comes back in May. I just saw something else. Um, Legends, Stargirl, Supergirl isn't supposed to start, isn't supposed to come back until the summer either. Um, or hmm. very late spring as well. So I'm wondering if they're going to have it come back after um, Superman and Lois. Right. Well, you know, just proof of concept. Superman and Lois, uh, a show that was given 13 episodes they expanded it to 15 um cw should run year-long programming with um you know shorter to no breaks in between episodes of the series maybe just breaks um for certain events obviously like you know when the super bowl happens it's just going to take away viewers right. and things like yeah. that oh, this but like when there's shorter seasons like yeah yeah Shorter seasons, better story, better money per show, per episode, and year-round programming. That way they don't all have to run concurrently at the same time and have the summer break. You know, that was one thing I felt like years ago, um, USA did that. Like, they always did a lot of original programming over the summer. Like, that's when Psych would air and stuff. And it was great because during the summer, back when we just had our basic cable, <laughs> um, we had something to watch, you know, something new to look forward to. Um, and I feel like that would be awesome, you know, when DC Universe was on, they, you know, they gave us stuff over the summer, which was nice. So it would be it would be nice to have something Net like that. Yeah, network TV is not the same as it used to be. Um, it's nice to see the, the, um, the appointment television programming, like, so I bought the whole season of Superman and Lois season one. I already bought it. So I'm going to have all of it every time a new episode drops every uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever it gets released on Amazon Prime. And um, but I'm still going to watch it every single Tuesday on TV, watch it through the commercials. And then when I go to rewatch the episode, I'll watch it on my Amazon Prime without commercials. But I'm watching it on television. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. But um, I'm watching it live. That's for sure, as much as possible. And, um, you know, network television and the standards, especially in the streaming age, seem to – it seems like it should probably be on its way out. Um, changing, you know, changing to year-round programming, which they've always had year-round programming, but – they always had the bulk, the bulk of their shows, the shows that they cared about the most, you know, in the fall and spring um, with television seasons. Do you remember um, when, like, the uh, TGIF for ABC would do, like a, like, a special that was, like, a little teaser? It was an episode 
special, like, but it would tease and like introduce all the shows they were going to have in the fall. I remember watching a couple of those where it was just like the new stuff coming or whatever. And, you know, we just, we just don't get fun stuff like that. Like, I think the last time something fun that I can think of is back when they did that special on the CW before Wonder Woman, the movie came out um, with like Kevin Smith and Jeff Johns and stuff. Where they were talking about like Wonder Woman, the movie and Justice League and Suicide. I think they had it even before Suicide Squad came out. Like I know BVS, I think, came out at the time. Maybe. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. It's been so long, but do you remember that? Um, I remember, I remember some of the, uh, some. So over on HBO Max, we got the announcement that Superman, the animated series is coming to HBO Max March 17th, which will be awesome because one, that's our friend Luke Bug's birthday. Two, we're going to be doing this summer, which we've had planned for over a year now. We're going to look at Superman, the animated series. Yeah. I can't wait. So that's going to be awesome that, you know, as we do this, there'll be a place for listeners to join in, you know? Yeah. If, if they don't have the full, the complete series on DVD already. Um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately with the, with the move from, um, DC universe to HBO max, we may have to pause our legion of superheroes and pick that one up later. <laughs> Our reviews on on those episodes, but yeah, that uh, um, that definitely. I'm excited to talk about Superman. <laughs> I, I've loved that show since I was little. Yeah, I have the VHS, but we'll uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. <laughs> um, yeah, it does suck that that didn't get moved with everything else so our legion discussion did get paused and also hbo max news is we got our first look of blackfire's costume in titans so this is kind of the third costume reveal for titans we got starfire we got red hood and now blackfire and blackfire looks awesome i mean they're just continually doing really good costume work definitely that has always been the strongest point of titans um then next was their focus on character you know mm-hmm. um but so i mean i'm looking forward to what they bring us with titan season three and it likely should have a step up in budget which we've talked about and um they'll be able to expand what the team is able to do hopefully we get some good Titans action. A um, little bit less of the in, inner fighting drama. Yeah. We, cause I feel like, I feel like we got, go ahead. No, no. Like, like I said before, if you kind of look at <laughs> Titans season one and two is one season of like your standard TV show, because it's like, you know, the Titan season one's your first half. Titan season two is your back half. When it ends, you're in a good place. Like, they're the team. Feel like. um, you know, and I'm hoping for more Beast Boy action of, you know, him not just being one in. Yeah. Yeah, finally breaking through, getting to become a, um, multiple different types of animals. Um, maybe we get, maybe he gets better at changing, and it's not so um, slow and... Because he always has to duck out of the fight and all this other stuff. So, um, really hope they do expand this year. It's it's been great the last two seasons, um, but it definitely does need to evolve if it wants a fourth season. Because uh, you know it was really great character stuff, but there was a lot of um, inner fighting uh, between teammates and and for the characters themselves. You know they're fighting their own demons and um you know we got we got some characters to get through that in the first two seasons no doubt we're going to see some other characters have it in the se- in the third season um but i think it needs to um you know give us give us a little more of a team dynamic that works together as opposed to one that's always fighting all the time 
I, I agree. Um, I do know that they Connor Leslie was spotted on set. Um, so that's going to be awesome. You know, we'll get to see uh, Donna Troy back as at Speculum. Now, Black Adam has reported that it's going to start filming April to August of this year in Georgia. So that's great because that was like what announced. <laughs> that's like seven years in the making now. I mean, I think it was in 2014. And I think I feel like The Rock as Black Adam was released shortly after they released. Because I remember it was the night, it was the day after The Flash premiered on CW that they made that huge announcement of Ezra Miller as a Flash for Justice League and the whole like slate of their planned films. And um, I want to say within like a day or so of that when they announced The Rock was going to be Black Adam. So, you know, I feel like 2020, we just kind of forget even happened as a year. It's kind of picking back up, left off. Yeah, the local news around here, they they like to put the um, 2020, the lost year. You know, everybody lost a year of their lives just being stuck in, in one place all the time. I mean, it's, it's pretty true. I mean, um, so yeah, I just feel like we're picking back up. And then also Shazam 2 starts filming in May or June. Is when they're going to, late May or early June, Shazam 2 is going to start filming. So that's that's a positive. We're getting things, you know, going. It'll be nice. And, you know, the only thing with Shazam is all the kids are growing up. And I'd rather have the kids more grown up and just keep exploring the same dynamic and try to recast. Um, you know, it's always weird, like, if they would have cast Billy younger than what they did in the Shazam movie. Um... But at the same time, you know, part of the fun of Shazam is the fact that he is a kid. And yeah, what what we don't get to see often with Billy and Shazam is we only get to see a compressed couple of years of his life as Shazam. We don't get to see much of anything beyond like when he grows up to be a grown man with a job and he still had, and he's still the champion. Um, and, and he goes off to save the day. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we don't see too many stories like that. And I mean, that could be fun. You know, that, that could be some new kind of territory because I just, I don't want the re like a recast or anything. I feel like you lose a lot. Um, but speaking of Shazam, so actress, Rachel Ziegler, um, not familiar with her. Me neither. Um, she hasn't really done much. Has been cast in Shazam 2 and what they're calling an important role. Um, speculations all over the place. Um, the, the two that kind of come to my mind um, is either one of the three weird sisters um, like the sisters of fate yeah because that's who they, that's who they talked about was going to be in it or but the other big like kind of rumor is she's the tampa hmm. um so i'm like okay um either i mean one to go either way i'm fine with so i have been asking for a new live action Zatanna for as long as I can remember because it's a great character needs to be explored um and with magic and everything like this makes sense said that on legends slash arrowverse and here we are yeah um I mean I like how we have so far in the DC universe and um, it's, it's it kind of seems like moving forward with the Flash and you know the possibilities for Shazam and we get Black Adam and the JSA that's going to be involved there. Um, I like how so far the DC universe seems to just be 
opening up and giving you characters, even in solo films, like for, for specific heroes, um, you still see so much stuff that, um, encompasses the DC universe, um, people and places. And, um, you know, it's just, just giving us more characters, not being, I don't know, such a small and focused, um, plot, but also, you know, um, focusing on what they need to focus on the, the characters. Yep. I agree. Um, I think it's important that they do that just because characters can work together without forcing characters that shouldn't be together to be together. Um, I look forward to whatever happens because I just, yeah. I like my content. I want more of my content and it's just a good time. Also on the movie front, we got, they're working on a blue beetle movie. They have a director attached to blue beetle and it's Jaime Reyes, blue beetle. And cool. I mean, it's a good character. I love Jaime's story. In Young Justice, season two, I think he's a great character to explore. It keeps the DC brand films alive without constantly beating us with the same stuff. Right. And Jaime's story is very um, science fiction. Um, and even in the past, in like Young Justice, there was mysticism connected to it as well. Um, so it could be pretty, could be pretty interesting. Um, because Jaime Reyes is the blue beetle. I mean, he is the only one who truly inter the only blue beetle who tru truly interfaced with the scarab. So, um, that's going to be, that that's an interesting character point to be able to think about. Um, especially if they, delve back into the history and discuss the first blue beetle, which I can't remember his name and then discuss Ted Cord as well. Yeah. If they give us any history on the scarab. And that would be really cool to have some history on the scarab, you know, even do something where you have, uh, what do you call it? Well, um, Ted Cord like at the beginning with the scarab and then has the accident, you know, and then like jump, yeah. jump forward or something. And that's kind of my thought. I, I, yeah, I have no problem with them kind of jumping in in the middle of the action. And Ted Cord is like on his way out, you know, fighting, fighting for his life. And then, you know, what happens happens. And Jaime Reyes is passing by outside, and, you know we go from there. Exactly. Anyways, let's keep it moving here. We got some more news to discuss. We have an announcement that I feel like pretty much nobody saw coming. <laughs> um, that just kind of took everyone by a huh? And that is, we have a new Supergirl, not a new Supergirl movie, but we have a new Supergirl for the Flash movie. And first of all, the actress is Sasha Cali. She is of Hispanic descent, origin. I love when we talk about comic book characters, you say it works. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> right. She's done The Young and the Restless. And uh, um, first of all, like, I watched my friend Donovan sent me this clip of, like, her just doing some interviews and stuff from some of her acting because I'm not watching The Young and the Restless. Um, she's got a good vibe, energy, feel to her, and I can totally see... Um, where they would pick her. 
She also, I mean, you look at her, she has dark hair. She would look good next to Cavill as Cavill's cousin. Um, they could pull it off. And, you know, like, even me, like, the only thing is, like, I always complain about, like, hair color and stuff just because so much in comics, characters are recognized by their hair color because different artists draw features and faces differently. You only have so many colors. So it really, you know, uh, is important on hair color. You know, because even... Yeah, like, even more so on the page. Because, like, okay, like the Flash, you know, he te- is blonde. And Grant has brown hair, a light brown. Um, that's the closest we've got to, like, the Flash. It's correct. Yeah, Ezra's hair is black. Um, and, uh, um, you know, in the comics, you've got multiple Flashes, people who've held the mantle of the Flash. And, you know, Barry's blonde hair, Wally's redhead. Um, Bart is usually brown. Yep. And, I mean, it just helps you distinguish. So, you know, there's been a lot of people already saying shade, first of all, that she's not blonde. First of all, they they don't have to make her blonde, okay, for the movie. They don't have to do that. They don't want to. Um, You know, Melissa is not even a natural blonde. No, she's a brunette. Okay. And, you know, so there is this thing called hair color. Okay. Um, Most actors who play Superman, their hair is more darker, and then they dye it black to make it that jet black. Okay. Um, So let's calm down on that. Okay. If they choose not to move forward with her being uh, blonde, okay, just give me the good character, you know. Um, the whole that she is part Hispanic uh, does not bother me. Um, my only thing is if the person, actress, whatever, looks like she could be related to whoever Superman is. That's, you know, because, I mean, all they have to do is um, make uh, her mom. You know, like if they showed her Kryptonian parents, make her mom more Hispanic, whatever. Um, well, know, you know... Crypt, the the show Krypton, we we had multiple races there. Exactly, everybody living together at different levels because of the um, strict class system, the strict caste system that um, was on Krypton, and uh, you know all all different races living together. That's you know there's, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of messed up that that's not how the world is already, but um, or at least peacefully, I guess. Yep. Yep. Um but uh you know it's it it makes no difference. Um I just I just want a, a decent car, uh car as RL. And I mean, you know, like Earth 2, we got Valzad and guess what? Valzad is black on Earth 2. Yeah. So, um does that mean the Zods are black like they are on Krypton? absolutely makes no difference um i mean it's great for the representation of ev- of everybody but makes absolutely no no difference on um what what character they choose I just or, want- or or the race of that that character in in most respects there's a few characters just because of their history and their story wouldn't really make sense for them to be anything else but the only one that really comes to mind couple. That I've talked about before is Captain. Yeah, America. is Captain, is America. Captain America. Yeah, because, that's the that's probably the main one. And I say that because one, we know our history, and I hate saying it, but I don't think that they would want a anyone of a different race to have that kind of power to be the symbol of America during World War II. Um, and the whole idea with him being blonde haired, blue eyes was it was a slight at Hitler at the same time. You know, like Captain America is pure American, but yet he is like Hitler's dream for what an Aryan should be. So like it was an attack on him at the same time. Um, I just Makes sense. I just want good like actors that can bring these characters to life correctly. 
that, that's what I want. You know, we, we talked about a little bit, and we won't dive into it. Just, just glancing at Tyler, he looks like, oh, he could be a Superman, but he doesn't, like, look like your plastic Superman. But yet his acting his, and his portrayal, I see the character in him. And Absolutely. That, and that's what's important to me is I, you know, we have so many of these comic book character uh, Um, that they get and we get basically like these models representation what I mean are people who look the part they look like it but yet they do very little to bring the character to life to make me feel the character based more than based on the looks um so I'm excited. I think the real part about this whole thing is the Flash movie, really? Like, it means that is she either A, an alternate Earth, or B, like, a fallout of what the Flash does? Like, if it's Flashpoint or not, like, when he, whatever happens in his hijinks, like, is she on another Earth, or is... When he gets back to Earth, she's there. Like, what's her role kind of going to play in this? Because if they're going to cast this actress and believe in her talents, I don't want it to be kind of a throwaway. Um, I don't want it to be like, oh, she's the Supergirl on this Earth that Barry works with, and that's it. Like, um, Because if they want to continue and do something with her and do a Supergirl movie with her, or she appears in a alongside Superman because a Superman Supergirl film would be excellent as well. I just, you know, I don't want her to be nothing, you know, like if they're going to have Supergirl, I want her to be around for a while. Yeah. Definitely, um, you know, uh, this the 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 flashpoint idea, the multiple Earths. It's a great way to bring um, bring bring back old characters, like we're getting Michael Keaton, but also um, to introduce new characters. I mean, could they be one-offs that are that maybe get picked up later on? I mean, we're just, you know, the the multiverse aspect of bringing the multiverse aspect to the DC universe as a whole um, through comics, television, movies here kind of makes anything you want to do wide open as long as you um, do a great story mm -hmm. and, and, and are true to the characters. I mean... I agree, because I just, I want well done stuff. I'm tired of so much, like, oh, we want to kind of do it like this. And then we end up down the road and talking about Reboot. And speaking of Reboot, here's the big news that everybody has blown out of proportion. Way out of proportion, man. Because what was reported and what I read was from Deadline that J.J. Abrams is set to produce a new Superman film. They have no director. And they have a screenwriter. The screenwriter is an African-American who had previously worked writing the Ryan... Googler and Michael B. Jordan's next film. Okay? That's what was reported. That was the gist of it. Okay? Now, with those details, it is not specified if it is a complete reboot. Because they didn't say reboot in the article. They said a new Superman film. Yes. It does not specify if it's a Henry Cavill Superman. Okay? So, 
without those details, people are now taking this and saying, oh, they're rebooting Superman again without Cavill. Cavill's Superman. He's my Superman. Let's, you know, um, have Cavill. And then because of the author's affiliation, everyone's speculating and saying, oh, it's going to be Valzad. It's going to be Valzad. Um, or even Calvin Elvis. Uh, Calvin Ellis. So I've seen that one as well, of course. I've seen that one, but not as much. Um, and all I can say is, let's see. Okay, before we all jump the gun, let's see what's going on. It could be Man of Steel 2. It could be a Man of Steel that introduces Valzad into it with Cavill, with potential of his own films. Because I think Valzad, you kind of need somewhat of established universe or established something to bring him in. Or it just kind of feels odd because of his story. Yeah, yeah. His his story being, you know, he was hidden. Um, Superman was in the world. And he took on Superman's um, family crest when he revealed himself. Plus, he's a... Um, plus he's a vegetarian or a vegan. I'm not sure which, but, um, and, and he, um, is a pacifist. Yeah. He has a very interesting story. I mean, and try to remember because it's been, but didn't he show up on earth too? Mm -hmm. And wasn't it after his, for the longest time on the earth two new 52 comics, Batman and Superman were dead. Yeah, in the opening of the New 52, it's um, Darkseid invades Earth and um, is winning. And Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman, they devise a plan that will um, stop the invasion. And during, their, during executing their plan, it works, but they, um, they all end up dead. Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. So on Earth 2... And it was only those three, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and and yeah, the, so on Earth two, the world exists with a Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman who saved the planet and died. And <clears throat> so, you kind of have to have some sort of to do his character correctly. <laughs> you kind of need some sort of establish Superman um, or I mean you could probably make it work but I don't know it's just one of those I, don't, I, I just feel like you need to find a way to make his character because then you know, do you really get the character that he is you know because of where he stands now Calvin Ellis is, is a different earth that is of the house of L it's a different storyline, and if that's yeah, he's a Cal L with a with a C, and however else they they spell it differently. So I am if they want to do a Calvin Ellis film, that's fine. Like I'm cool. I mean i I don't care. I'm just tired of people jumping the gun and already hating on stuff before they've even said anything. They've not given us any details. They've not said anything about it. And yeah, it, it was literally just an announcement of we've got a writer and J.J. Abrams and his produ and his production company are working on this. Um, and my thing is, I you know with with Henry deserves a standalone film. He deserves a chance to really show and prove his Superman skills because he got Man of Steel and that was Superman becoming Superman and then he got the shaft of very secondary in BVS in both cuts I mean at least the, the ultimate cut gives him more to do as Clark um, and then Justice League theatrical he's minimal in it and we'll see how much he pays <laughs> And, and they screwed up his face. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, you know, some of his performance <laughs> scenes aren't bad. 
Uh, I will say that, like, some of his, like, in-costume Superman parts are not bad as far as, like, how he's acting and the feel I get watching it. But that digital face thing screwed it up to where it's like, ugh. So he deserves his own film. And I just feel like we're not we're not exactly like in a place where I feel like we need a complete reboot of Superman unless you go with like a Valzad or Calvin Ellis and then it's a whole new universe of a Superman. Because I mean I think back when we did when they did Superman Returns they maybe could have shepherded a soft reboot out of that like into something more um, but they wanted to distance themselves from all the Superman that had come before because Superman Returns being so much of just a continuation of what was already done. You know, it wasn't so much an ode appreciation to the Reese film as much as it was like um, just a continuation. And it, you know, this was the same time as we had the Dark Knight going on. And so I think after the Dark Knight, they were looking at different options of what to do, and they just decided that hey, we should just do a clean reboot, like what we should have done with Superman Returns. And that made sense at the time. Um, so I just feel like we don't really need that right now. But we'll no, I'm uh, you know Cavill. Um... Cavill has become my uh, favorite Superman. Um, he he just, I mean, one, he looks the part, two, um, in, in some of his scenes, you know, uh, especially in Man of Steel, like, just with a look and with his actions, um, uh, what he does um, to save the day, like, he inspires trust and hope in, in the people around him. He, he really did in that movie. Um, People like to look past that because of the um, the large scale action set pieces, but he did. And um, in in Batman versus Superman, he he got to play the part of um, you know part of the world loves Superman and part of the world distrusts him because of their hatred and their bigotry. Um. As well as, you know, like Batman and um, just trust issues. Like, they, you can't trust somebody that powerful who could potentially be that dangerous. Um, and you can see that part of the world would would react that way as well. And then we're going to get to see what he gets to do here. Um, you know, his, his Superman, I think, if he had a, another opportunity to land somewhere between Man of Steel and BBS and... Um, Justice League, um, he would be really great. Mm -hmm. uh, I I would love to see him again in a Man of Steel two, um, you know, with with a different director. Um, I mean, we get we get MC, and I love Zack Snyder, and I think he was the perfect choice, in my opinion, to to bring Superman to the big screen to show what's possible to be done with Superman these days. Um, but I want to see, uh, you know, they they do all these movies, sequels and stuff. A lot of them get done by different directors. And, like, especially if you see, like, the MCU. Um, you know, First Avenger was great, but Winter Soldier was the best thing the MCU has done. And, and the Russo brothers uh, did a lot of great stuff for the MCU just, right. by, getting their, just by getting their foot in the door. Uh, and, I and I think... And we can have that with Superman. And I mean, also, I don't, I think Zach is, you know, Zach is, he's done with, with all that. Like, you know, he's giving us his, his Snyder cut of Justice League. And then, you know, that's him. Like, so, yeah, uh, which is okay. I mean, he can produce, obviously, especially if they use um, Cavill moving forward in any other film. Um, and, and I want to see more with him. I'd love to see Cavill with another director be Superman. But if they tell a, another universe story with a different Superman, I mean, I I think it's I want to see it. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see it, and 
you know, I'm sure that I will be entertained and, and also have things to say about it. I'm sure there's going to be great things, and I'm sure there's going to be things that uh, aren't so great. That everybody yells and complains about, because that's all exactly. Want, but that's all anyone ever wants to do. So, all right, that's the news. <laughs> all, we're all caught up on this fun episode of the Krypton Report. I want to thank everyone for being here with us, and have a good night. Look up in the sky. <laughs>